and today's rattling of the market by the Bank of Japan. Let's get a rise, business analyst and our central bank's chief correspondent, Laurie Laird, in now <laughs> from uh, London to crunch the rate decisions week for us. Great having you, Laurie. It's good. Thank God it's good as a Friday. Well, I'm so pleased that it is. For those of us, for those of us geeks who follow central banks, this has been an exhausting week. So please forgive me if I'm a little bit giddy. I know, I know, I know. It's not so easy following central banks. But, but, but just put it simply put, what message did you grab from the central bank this week? Let's start from Jerome Powell. Yeah, let's start with Jerome Powell. This was probably the least surprising decision and announcement that the Fed yes. on Wednesday night. They raised interest rates by 25 basis points or a quarter of a percentage point. That is after the Fed chose not to raise rates at its last meeting. Now, that to me was a little bit fishy, right? If you think, because at that meeting, Jerome Powell signaled this quarter point rise that we had announced earlier this week. Now, one of the things that's, that, mon that that central bankers don't know, and they openly admit this, is how long transmission will be. How long will it be until these interest rate rises that are already in the system start to slow economic growth? They admit they don't know what this is. Could be 18 months, could be a year, could be 12 months. And the fact that the Fed didn't raise in June, but said we might raise later, made no sense to me. If you think inflation is going to be a problem down the road and transmission is somewhere down the road, 12 months, 24 months, we're still debating that, why on earth would you delay a rate hike? But in any case, we got that quarter point hike from the Fed and Jerome Powell said, we don't know what we're going to do next. We could pause again, we could hike rates Again, uh, we're going to look at the data, data dependency. This has become such a buzzword for central bankers. I think the markets thought that, the, that Jerome Powell's message was, we're done for the moment. Right after he said that, we had U.S. GDP for the second quarter, which is a blowout number, Bosan, up 2.4%. Analysts mm. were looking for more like 1.7. And let me put that in a, a, a currency we can all understand. America reports at an annualized rate on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter rate, which is what it, most other countries do, up 0.6%. That is really quite solid growth. No evidence of a slowdown here. So whether that changes the Fed's thinking is really up in the air. Mm. Uh, but again, was there so much difference between what Jerome Powell said and what Christine Lagarde said yesterday about is that a destination? Are they sure of where they're going? And when do they know when they get there as far as the central bank? They are the ones leading from the front. So uh, do you think we can trust them yeah. up to this point? I, I, this is the question, isn't it? We have heard, and you're right, Christine Lagarde's message was exactly the same as Jerome Powell's. It surprised a lot of people that she even entertained or said the word pause because inflation in the Eurozone is much higher than it is in the U.S. Annual inflation, about 8% in the Eurozone. We're down to 3% in the U.S. 3% in the U.S. sounds great compared to 8%, but it's still above the Fed's target of 2%. 8% in the Eurozone, four times the ECB's target. So I was surprised that she was so um, readily uh, ready to admit that a pause could be in the offing. It's a brave thing to say when inflation is at 8%. Sorry, I digress there. You asked such a very good question. Can we believe these guys? Can we believe that they have their forecasts right? You remember when inflation started to rise? What did we hear? Supply chain problems. Don't worry about it. It'll be transitory. Inflation continued to rise after the invasion of Ukraine. No. What did we hear from central bankers? Oil prices are rising. It'll, it'll fall out. We don't have to worry. I don't trust. I don't trust inflation. I don't trust inflation. It's just, it's just very foxy, as it were. You know, dodgy in the manner of speaking. But again, here we were Friday. We we're fighting about recession. They had a Bank of Japan. Try to make a sense for me of what the Bank of Japan tried to do today. It's a little bit about the negative interest rate and the yield and coming into the market and buying up some assets. What exactly is Japan up to? I, I hope that I can clarify this for you. Honestly, I spent most of my morning calling on my sources. None of us could figure it out. The Bank of Japan essentially told us that they didn't change rates. They did. 
it was a very big policy decision, no matter how they packaged it. You give me, let me digress just a tiny bit. Japan is in such a different situation than most of the developed world. We've been talking about nothing but inflation for the past two years. Japan has suffered from deflation for the past two decades. And deflation, that's when prices fall. Sounds like a great thing, doesn't it? But economically, it's not sound because if prices are falling or people expect that, you put off buying. If you think the price of a pair of trainers is going to fall next week, you're not going to buy it today. If you're a business and you're going to invest, you're not going to make those big capital spending decisions now if you think it's going to be cheaper later. So deflation has a way of setting, putting brakes on economic growth. So the Bank of Japan has had very low and, in fact, negative interest rates for years and years. They're trying to get inflation up. They've kept interest rates below zero, and they've also tried to give the economy a boost by capping the yield on 10-year bonds. They're called Japanese government bonds, JGBs, and the central bank is engaged in a lot of buying to keep those yields low at about 0.5%. Put this in perspective, the same instrument, the equivalent instrument in the U.S. is yielding 4%. Big gap. They want to keep borrowing rates low so people don't save and they spend, create a bit of economic activity. What the BOJ said today is they will now cap that rate of the JGB at 1%. But weirdly, they said, this isn't a policy change. Essentially, once it's translated, they said, this is a tweak. And that's why we are all confused. Now, they haven't moved their main interest rate above zero, but they are going to allow market interest rates to drift higher. This is a big, big policy change, no matter how they've wrapped it up. Well, for, for everything you've said, Laurie, I guess I need a, another cup of coffee just to uh, brush it know, all I'm down sorry, and try I'm to make a sense of it. Uh, I was trying to stay awake because, again, is that about, you need to tweak this cup of coffee okay, a little bit. Did I put for, you to sleep? Well, you, did well, you, you were, say because again, I, did, I thought the BOJ was uh, sending me to sleep. Uh, here you were. But, but again, what's, did, did the market make any sense of the whole rate hike, tweaking? and all chasing it, trying to wake up inflation in Japan and try to get a, a hold on it in Washington. Where does that leave the markets, by the way, my friend? My friend, stay awake for this answer, <laughs> please, and I'll try and keep it, I'll try and keep it short. We're talking about the DOJ, and this seems to be the central bank way across an ocean. Why do we care? We care for a lot of reasons. Because these yields in Japan have been so low, Japanese investors have taken their money and they've put it all across the world. They are the biggest owner of U.S. bonds. They are massive in the Danish market, Brazil, South Africa. Now, the fear is that Japanese investors, if they feel interest rates in their home country are going up, the fear is they may pull this money from abroad and put it into Japan. And certainly you can see why they would do that. There's not very little political risk in Japan, mm. where there's a lot of political risk in Brazil, and I would actually say perhaps in the U.S. as well. Uh, great. I think we just need... Thank you very much, Laurie, uh, in London. I think we'll just get, oh, into, we, get into the shower and get to bed and after being a very interesting week. Stay Thank you so awake, much. my friend. <laughs> Once I get out of here. Thank you so much, Laurie Lane.